What was it like when you were a young boy? Oh, it was great. Every spare minute had we had, we were off with the dogs and horses chasing rabbits. And it kept us out of mischief, it kept us in pocket money, and it was a great ride. What was the countryside like then? Because the rabbits have been a, a, a pain right from the word go, really. Oh, right? yeah. Uh, we, we used to get two shillings and sixpence um, up here on the rabbit cart. And they used to come around six days a week and pick them up. We had a box outside our gate that was fly through, and we used to gut them and hang them in there. And then I worked on the rabbit board for five years, and when I started, they were lousy. And when I finished, Cecil Kitto and I had the 12 best dogs on the rabbit board, and we could work all day, and we might get two or three rabbits on the point. We had them right down, we had them buggered, and then they knocked the rabbit board on the head, and away they went again. What are, what are the sort of stories? Are there any good, um, I don't know, fun or, or, or crazy things that you used to get up to in the day? Big pardon. Were there, any, were there any crazy things you used to get up to in the day, I don't know, like when you were rabbit shooting? Or any stories that you're allowed to tell us that, that we can... Oh, I don't know. I, I got dragged by a horse one day and I had a, a lump on me, rump the size of a bloody football. <laughs> And it bled for, well, they had to put a heat lamp on it to keep the blood from clotting. And it bled for four or five days before they could um, take the heat lamp off. I hear that you're a bit accident prone. Yeah, I've had 45 accidents. <laughs> so I'm doing pretty good to be here to tell the tale. I've started writing a book, but... I don't know when I'm going to get it finished. I've got it all written down so that I don't forget. What sort of accidents have you had? Can you tell me about some of the more memorable ones? Oh, motorbikes and rolling Land Rovers and I don't know how many times I've smashed my ribs and broke my leg and broke my neck. <laughs> I was in the hospital for six weeks there one time, had my neck and plaster. I was lucky, you know, real lucky that time I never got killed. And yet you keep coming back here? I'll never leave here. Nah. I lived next door to the Yard Gower School around there, but I never actually went to school at the Yard Gower. But I'm right next door to it. They tell me you've got to be a bit of a hard man to grow up in Terrace with the uh, the climate the way it is and, and the farming the way it is. What do you reckon? Have you, have you got any good stories around that? Yeah, no, I, th I think it's good. Um, I remember one time I went away up the Dunstan Creek, Deer Stalker, and I shot 13 big stags. And um, it snowed that night and there was 14 inches of snow on the ground next morning. And we had chains on the four wheels, big heavy duty, doubled up chains on the Land Rover. And coming back out over the Dunstan Creek, she, there was 18 inches of snow and she was chewing all the way and we were working be, walking beside her. And, um, when we took them down to the game, uh, game pack house in Cromwell, they ha had to hang them for a few days before they thawed out enough for them to skin them. <laughs> but there was no worry about them going off because they were bloody frozen. <laughs> Another day out in the Cruden, I had 19 deer on it, but they didn't weigh as much as the, uh, 13 big stags. So was, we, that, was that in the days when you used to, when you got paid for it or not, was that just for a uh, We used to sell them to game packers in Cromwell, um, Doug Jones. And when we were out in the 18 inches of snow, we made a, a sledge out of the bonnet of the Land Rover. 
and two of us could tow three deer on it easier than we could tow one each. And we had, had this great big sledge bloody track, or for about a mile, um, till we could get the, to the Land Rover. And um, when we walked into the hut, the mattresses were all uh, rolled up on the bunks. And I went, um, unrolled my mattress and had two great big ferrets curled up inside the mattress. And the mate must have died or they killed him and they'd eaten their mate. And old Bruce Becker, the joker that was missed me, his eyes were sticking out and he said, I'll eat our bloody ears off while we're sleeping. <laughs> so he, he burnt a candle beside his head all night to keep the ferrets off. <laughs> Did it work? Oh yeah, they're right. But oh, that was an education and a half, that was. We were bloody pleased to get back out over the top. <laughs> <laughs> they would have smelt too, did they? No, nah, they were frozen, so they oh, never went right. off. No, they would have kept for weeks. Everything was frozen. We couldn't even eat bread without throwing it out. The cereal was about the only thing we could eat without bloody um, unfreezing it. <laughs>